Asalaamu Alaikum listeners, welcome back to The Feature Show. I'm Jwaria Tanvir and I'm joined in this half of the show with two very special guests who are going to give us a bit of an insight into getting into STEM sectors by taking an alternative route to university. We're first going to be joined by Angelina Aziz, who is currently working as a software engineer apprentice for the Bank of New York in Canary Wharf. We're then going to be joined by Avar Samir, who is currently doing a degree apprenticeship with Dyson. Angelina, welcome to the show and thank you for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you very much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Lovely. Let's start off with telling the listeners a little bit about you. So you went to Chorney High School for Girls. You got straight A's and A-stars. You then proceeded on to Luton Sixth Form College, where you completed A-levels in physics, maths and computer science. So I guess the natural expected pathway for you was to go down that academic route and proceed on to university. So what actually led you to pursue an apprenticeship after college, if you describe your journey? Um, It's somewhat of a long journey, but I'll condense it a bit. So yeah, I was always really academic and expected to go down the sort of university route. I got to sixth form and I realized that, oh, you actually have to work for the grades you want here, which was an alien concept to me because in high school in Chorney, I kind of just floated about and did whatever I wanted to do. Um, That is not possible at A levels, or at least it wasn't for me. Um, So working hard at that point in my life was a bit of an alien concept. Um, And because of that, I did not get my A-star AA offer that I needed to go to study computer science at university. So I decided to take a gap year Um, and on that gap year I was thinking of maybe reapplying or just trying to go straight into industry but I wasn't too sure and I had a look at a few apprenticeships thinking oh that's like a back burner safe route just in case Um, but I ended up getting applying to a few a few apprenticeships and getting some phone calls back saying we'd be really interested in hiring you Um, I did a few interviews with the Bank of New York, really liked everyone there. The interview process was lovely and everyone I met seemed really genuine. So I decided to join the company and I do not regret it whatsoever. It's been a brilliant experience ever since. Sounds like a very interesting journey with lots of pleasant surprises along the way. I guess one of the transitional uh, challenges with doing an apprenticeship as you leave sixth form is that transition from 100% studies to 100% work. How did you find that transition and were there any other key challenges that you found? Yeah, so I found the transition actually somewhat hard just because in sort of education, you're you're a bit more spoon fed. Um, You have to be a a little bit less of a self-starter or you can get away with being a little less of a self-starter. So for me, I kind of just floated through sixth form, as I said. Um, But as soon as I got to my gap year, I realized that I need to level with myself and that if I actually want to get to where all of my aspirations lie, I need to focus on myself a bit more and use my gap year productively. And thankfully, halfway through my gap year is when I began my apprenticeship. Um, But throughout my gap year, I was sort of focusing on bettering myself, organizing myself and kind of making up for some of the time that I felt I had lost at sixth form. So the gap year sounds like a really good learning opportunity and a way to kind of help ease that transition, I guess, from studies to work. Yeah, for me, it definitely was. And also, I just had the experience to talk to a lot more people than I would usually and sort of broaden my horizons, um, work full time for the first time ever. So I'd had a job ever since I was 16, but I'd never really worked full time. So it was my experience to work full time and experience the working world. Um, I did a few jobs that I um, where I had to work 48, 50 hours a week. I worked cleaning aircrafts for EasyJet um, at night for like 12 hours shifts and it was ridiculous. And I was like, well, this is why I need to put the hard work in while I'm young so I don't have to spend the rest of my life doing this. And sure, some people might really enjoy it, but it it wasn't for me. Wow, sounds like you definitely developed that strong work ethic early on. So tell us a little bit about your responsibilities as a software engineer for any young people listening who might be unsure and how hands-on do you actually get involved with projects? 
Yeah, so much to my surprise, it's a lot more hands-on than I thought it would be. I thought, of, I thought it'd be somewhat like school where they give you projects to do and you do them. Maybe every now and again, something would go into production. However, um, my apprenticeship is really split into two aspects. So we have the educational side of it and we have the working side of it. So four out of five of my days are spent on the working side and one out of five of my days are spent on the educational side. However, that's flexible um, depending on the week, the month or what the focus is. The educational side means that I have to uh, write, uh, write a portfolio, uh, sit exams and at the final at the end of my apprenticeship I'll be judged on a project that I'll submit to the Chartered Institute of Computer Science and gain my qualifications as a chartered computer scientist or computer or software engineer more specifically and with the work side of things I thought the projects that they'd give us wouldn't necessarily be big tasks they'd be somewhat menial however um, after sort of starting my role, I realized that the tasks that they actually give us are really important and they're kind of just as they would give any any new graduate or anyone working with the team. Um, they give us the tasks according to what needs to be done for the company. We work with them. If we have any issues, we can talk to senior members of the team, work through them. And I've been able to learn a lot, a lot more than I think I would have at university. I've learned mm -hmm. to use so many different technologies and kind of experience how the working world of a software engineer really is. Okay, lovely. Recently on the 11th of February, it was International Day of Women and Girls in Science and just really to celebrate females in STEM. There aren't actually that many females um, in STEM from BAME backgrounds, but I found technology to be one of the more harder sectors where you find that representation. So where did your interest in technology stem from? Um, yeah, so my interest actually came from uh, somewhat of a ridiculous place. When I was younger, I think I was around eight or nine, I used to see like computer engineers or hackers on the TV and I was like, oh, I really want to do that. That looks really cool. Um, after being in the role, I realized that's not exactly what it is. But um, when I was younger, I sort of went through, taught myself some coding, learned how to program websites. Uh, and then from there, it kind of grew. I got to GCSE and A-level and realized this is something that I really like and I really enjoyed the problem solving and analytical side. Um, so really glad that I chose that path on a whim at like eight or nine years old. Uh, just touching on the first point there though, the sort of BME representation in tech is relatively low as well. And the female representation is ridiculously low in tech, I think. Um, in the UK, it's around between 12 to 15 percent of uh, people working in tech are women, which I mean, it's it's ridiculously low just because most women don't see it as a viable career path. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at BME women in tech, I couldn't actually find statistics on it, but I'm sure it's a lot lower than 15 to 12 percent, because from my experience, I've not yet. Actually, I've, I think I've met one other BME woman in tech within my company, uh, which is, it's it's a massive company and I've, I've yet to meet anyone else. So it's it's definitely an underrepresented, underrepresented field. Those statistics really do bring to light the importance of having conversations like this. Um, was it ever daunting for you to pursue a career in technology given that lack of representation? For me, I, I was always just so in love with the concept of tech and technology that it was never a barrier for me. However, it was something that I would often think about when I read about computer science courses and saw that oh, only 1% or 2% of the cohort are actually female. And I'm sure that the females there won't look a lot like me. Um, it was always something in the back of my mind, but it was never something that I was going to let stop me. And that's why I, I in, in many ways, it kind of encouraged me to do it more because I wanted to be that representation for mm -hmm. younger people or other people that may have had that interest and kind of put it on the back burner. Yeah, no, lovely. I, I love that, that you want to be that representation and I'm sure you definitely are. Um, you've mentioned a bit about how when you were younger, you learned coding for websites. 
I guess due to the practical nature of apprenticeships, it is important for a young person to find ways to upskill themselves. You've got an Instagram coding page to help people develop the coding skills. Can you briefly tell us a little bit about your page and how that would help someone with coding? Yeah, so that's a fairly new development. Um, if you guys want to follow, it's at Angelina dot code. Yep, I think I've got it right there. Um, and the reason why I started it, I started it fairly recently and I definitely need to upload more. But the reason why I started it was because I felt like COVID was a time where a lot of people were lost and they wanted to sort of learn new skills. I had a few people reach out to me saying, oh, I might be interested in programming. Where do you recommend I start? And I thought, well, this is something that I find fascinating and I think I could really help people with my experience. Um, and as I continue to learn and develop myself as a software engineer, I can kind of share that journey. So I decided to start an Instagram page to share that. And also on the representation factor, I feel like a lot of young people that are interested in maybe going into uh, technology might not see someone that looks like me working as a software engineer. So I can I can be that representation for them. Lovely. It's definitely a page worth checking out for anyone who is interested in upskilling themselves through coding. You've given us such a great insight and advice um, into the life of a software engineer. What would your one key takeaway advice for any young people be who are listening to this? It, it's just so easy to use the resources on the internet to go out and maybe teach yourself one thing and see if you like it, see if it's something that you'd enjoy whether it's in software engineering or programming or a completely different field maybe you want to learn Spanish or French just use the internet to its its full capabilities because it is an amazing place. Lovely um, and I guess just kind of touching upon the university versus apprenticeship route what would your advice be for someone who is confused about which route to take? Um, for me I've loved having my apprenticeship and it's been a great opportunity to me and I feel like it's shaved a few years off of my career. So if you're maybe unsure, um, I'd say evaluate all of the pros and cons, maybe take a massive whiteboard, sit there, pros, cons, what is better suited to you and where you want to go and decide on that. But I definitely say don't discount apprenticeships just because university is the norm. Okay, lovely. So I guess it really is about having your destination in mind and looking at all the different pathways to get there and finding one that's best suited to you. Angelina, thank you so much for joining us and providing us with more of an insight into the life of a software engineer apprentice. I'm sure there's lots of great information that young people can take away. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.